If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want more funding for your deals, regardless of what your hard money lender says, your broker, your banker, your mortgage lender, then you're in the right place. Don't go anywhere. I'm getting ready to plug you into the funding for your deals. But first, let me give you a special welcome. My name is Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. And so when you're listening on iTunes or Google Play or watching, on one of my YouTube channels. A very special welcome to you, specifically if this is your first time. And in just a moment, I'm going to introduce you to a ultra successful student of mine that has like put this real estate investing business on steroids. He's got an unbelievable story. He's a fellow North Carolinian, and I'm going to bring him on in just a second. But before I do, uh, as I promised just a second ago, I'm going to plug you into the funding. So if you're brand new to the show, I'm known as the Private Money Authority. And here on the show, we talk about all things real estate investing, talking about single family houses. We talk about some commercial. We talk about land deals. But the focus is on single family houses. And if you haven't heard my story, well, I've been investing in single family houses for about 15 years. My wife, Carol Joy, and I have here in eastern North Carolina. And up until 10 years ago, I was relying on funding from the banks and I was cut off with no notice. I was then introduced to this wonderful world of private money, not hard money, but private money. And since that time, 10 years ago, I haven't missed out on a deal because we did not have the funding. And again, it's not relying on banks or traditional methods of financing. We do about two or three transactions a month. The average profit now is $64,000 per deal. And uh, so we're doing the business and we're also uh, sharing information here on the podcast. My land, since we started the podcast last year, we're getting now as much as almost 30 downloads and listens a month. So welcome to the herd. So how am I going to plug you into the funding? Well, I've got a free online class that's on demand, just waiting for you to go watch. It's called Where to Get the Money Now. And it will explain to you the five steps that I use to get a lot of money for my deals. And here it is. After the show, check out www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast, all spelled in one word, M-O-N-E-Y podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Jay Connor, and I'm with an E R J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money podcast. All right, well, on with the show. My special guest that I've got here on today, my insanely successful guest, his name is Blair Halver, and he's the founder and the creator of a system that I've used and a motivated seller source I've used in the past called DealBot. It's a motivated seller, lead generation company. And Blair, since he started this, oh, just a few short couple of years ago, he's overseen and managed nearly $2 million in marketing spend, advertising budget of other real estate investors. And check this out, folks. Blair has generated over 100,000 motivated seller leads of single family houses. So like myself, Blair also does the business. He buys and sells houses in the Winston-Salem and Charlotte, North Carolina areas. And just in the past year alone, listen to this, Blair has acquired nearly $3 million in cash flowing properties. And that's been with zero money out of his pocket. And what's more than that, since Blair came into my world, he's a student of mine. He's attended my live event. He uh, now has access to over 300000 in private money. But even what's more greater than that, since coming to my live event, Blair has now done 20 deals, 20 deals, and he's made profit in cash and equity of over $600,000. Wow. Blair, how there? Welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me on, Jay. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what's amazing, Blair? is the success that you have attained since you just started your, you know, real estate, you know, investing education. And so first of all, Blair, tell everybody, I mean, you know, not everybody attains the success that you do since you started. 
What is it that makes you different? And what would you say you've done differently than say some other people that have been out there and gotten some real estate investing education? Yeah, you know, it. Uh, the first thing and really the main thing that comes to mind when you ask me that is something that one of my early mentors taught me a long time ago, even before I was doing my own house deals and getting into the real estate world at all. And he said, the secret to success was three words, just keep going. Okay. So as long as you don't quit and that's that, and I remember this and, you know, think about this regularly. If I just keep going, I know it's going to work out eventually. And we learn everything as we go along. And that's how life is. You just keep going. As long as you don't quit, you'll make, you know, make it to where you want to go. Well, you know, that reminds me too of when I was cut off from the banks from my funding over 10 years ago, I had a choice. I mean, I could quit or we could look for a better way. So I came up with a, with a similar saying, and it actually has become one of my mantras. And that is, it's, and it's very encouraging and it's hopeful and it's truthful. And that is, it's impossible for anybody to fail. It's impossible to fail until you choose to quit. Yeah. And what you just said is so powerful. I mean, you know, one of the greatest God-given gifts and blessings we've got is we've got the, we've got the power of, and the blessing of choice. I mean, you know, we get to choose what it is we want to do or keep doing. And as you said, just keep going. So, so tell everybody, tell my audience, um, what did your, what did your um, employment or working career look like prior to getting into real estate investing? And you're in, you've been in real estate investing now how long? Uh, well, I've been doing the marketing and lead generation since 2009. And, uh, but only doing my own house deals since about 2016, you know, I did a few wholesale deals 10 years ago in the crash, <laughs> but I kind of laid off it and just did the marketing since then, but really picked up steam here just in the past few years. Excellent. So, you know, what were you doing? So you're full-time real estate investing now, right? Yes. Yeah. And so what did your business career look like prior to real estate investing? Yeah, believe it or not, and a lot of people don't know this about me, but I actually used to do sound recording for reality TV shows. So I lived in Hollywood, out in LA, and my first job out of college was working for Dr. Phil. And uh, <laughs> and from from there, I went on, and in, in the TV production world, it's all freelance. So you go from one show to the next, and somehow I ended up in this circle of crew that we just started working all the real housewives shows and all that, that, that format. And you just kind of get in this circle and you just start doing all of them. And so that's, that's what I was doing for about 12 years before. So, I uh, so you, you have rubbed elbows with a lot of celebrities. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. I bet you could tell some stories. Yeah, I could. Maybe, uh, you know, for a non-recorded line here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we probably won't put this on the air out to uh, the thousands and thousands of viewers that we've got here on the podcast. So, so you've met Dr. Phil in person, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We'll leave it at that, right? Yes. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but look, here's what I've heard, and this isn't Dr. Phil. This is what, this is what I've heard about reality TV shows. The thing that I've heard, the only thing that's real about reality TV shows is that none of it's real. Uh, that's about right. That's about right. And especially the house flipping shows. Yeah. I was going to say, especially yes. the house flipping shows. So how did you get, how did you get interested in uh, real estate investing? You know, I got married almost 12 years ago. And in my first year of marriage, I read that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Probably a lot of folks have read that. And, you know, it kind of opened my eyes to the whole world of money in general, but specifically over in real estate. And, you know, I went to a couple of seminars back then and, you know, spent the money and did all that. And that's kind of what launched me. And I always had like a, you know, a side hobby or, you know, entrepreneurial bent. And so I always had a side business going on. And, but it wasn't until I really got serious about doing the, uh, you know, flipping my own houses to where I could quit my day job in television and just do this full time. Gotcha. So how long have you been full-time real estate investing now? Since 2016. 
Okay. So uh, as of now, you've been full time for at least three years. So, you know, you've been to a lot of trainings. You've been to my training. You've heard about and learned a lot of different strategies. But what I want to drill down on, Blair, for the sake of my audience, is you have really honed in on a particular on, on a particular few strategies on, on your favorite ways to find motivated sellers. And I know you, I mean, you actually provided, you know, a service for quite a while to other real estate investors for doing that. And you now, you know, you now focus on just a particular core set of strategies of locating deals and then your exit strategies. So first, let's start with, you know, what worked two years ago may not be working so well today. I mean, you've been in marketing for a lot of years and, you know, marketing changes, you know, from month to month and year to year and et cetera. So what would you say are your top favorite ways right now on finding and locating motivated sellers? You know, the cheapest cost per deal we're seeing right now comes from us just making outbound calls to expired listings. I mean, it's, it's that simple. I mean, these are people who their realtor, whoever failed them, couldn't get it sold. And now they're frustrated, beat up by the market. And we just have our virtual assistant call them and do an opening call with them, collect the facts and have the acquisitions person get on the phone, do a closing call and that's it. So, but then after that, the next best cost per deal that we see is with Facebook ads. And we'll get, you know, maybe one deal out of every 24 leads that come in off of Facebook, something like that, last I checked. And only then, after we've exhausted those two things, then we would start looking at Google ads, pay-per-click, and then on into direct mail if we wanted to scale out from there. But honestly, we get enough deals just from doing the first two things. Yeah, interesting. So let's talk about the expired listings strategy that you use. So would you say that on calling the expired listings, are these, are the, is it like most other motivated sellers? Are most of them requiring or not going to do a deal unless you're like close to buying it at retail value? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's fair to say most sellers want full price. <laughs> really, of 90% course. or more. Yeah. Yeah. Now you now you were mentioning a moment ago that on your Facebook ads of getting motivated sellers, it's taking you about 24 lead sheets, property lead sheets, talking with those people to get one deal, right? Yeah, it's actually a little bit better than that. That's 24 just raw form submissions on Facebook. Oh, so those are not 24 people you've talked to. That's actually 24 leads from, from the Facebook ads. Yeah, yeah. so we've, we've talked to less of them, maybe, I don't know, 15 to 20 of them. So one out okay. of that many. Mm -hmm. well, well, my statistic is right now one out of 15 of property lead sheets. It takes about 15 yeah. property lead sheets of 15 people that my acquisitionist has talked to for us to actually, you know, put a deal together. Now, would you say on your, on the outbound, so do us a comparison and contrast. What is that world of making outbound calls to expired listings look like compared to like on conversions to uh, a Facebook ad? Well, I mean, you're going to talk to a lot more people well, your VA is going to talk to a lot more people doing an opening call on the expired listings to get a deal. Because, I mean, if you think about expired listings, just like any other mailing list, so to speak, any other list of names, list of sellers, and you're making first contact with them, the conversion rate's always going to be less than if the seller calls you first, which is right. what they're doing on Facebook. So it's right. the difference between inbound and outbound marketing, but you got to have both, in my opinion. Right. So would you say that the numbers are about the same uh, as far as completed property lead sheets on expired listings? I would probably say even more PI sheets on expired listings to get a deal, but mm -hmm. they cost, uh, you know, insignificant compared to the Facebook leads. You know what I mean? Right. It's just your VA's time making that the phone call. Yeah. 
So now, what does your operation look like as far as people that you have working for you? I mean, um, who or, or how many people have you got like W-2 and, and then you got 1099? So what does your entire team look like? Who are they and what do they do? Yeah, you know, it's just me and three other people on my team. I have one virtual assistant who's in the Philippines. He works full time for us, just making outbound prospecting calls and screening the inbound leads that come in. So he's kind of our lead manager. And then I've got two acquisitionists here in North Carolina, one up in Winston-Salem and one down in Charlotte. I li- happen to live halfway between those two cities near Lake Norman. So it's just the four of us total, and we you know, get together on a weekly meeting kind of like this on a Zoom video call and, and just get stuff done and keep it all on track together. I got you. So, so you've got your team members that are talking to potentially motivated sellers. So they get the lead sheet filled out. Then who is actually doing the negotiation process and where into the negotiation process do you come into the deal? Yeah. So I've got, I'm really blessed and lucky to have such good team members because they handle everything You know, I haven't talked to a seller in at least a year. And that's because I've trained them on how to do that. And they run the closing call and the negotiation, the deal meeting and everything else. Where I come in is after they've got a deal signed up, I'll tell them which way we want to go with it on the exit or if we just want to cancel the deal. If it's just not a moneymaker for whatever reason. Right. So who goes out and gets contracts signed and does the closings at the, uh, I assume your closings are at a real estate attorney's office? Yes. Yeah. So the acquisitionist handles all that. All right. So you got your acquisitionist trained and, and you've given, they've got power of attorney or whatever to where they can sign for you and your company at the real estate attorney's office. Yeah. And actually on those closings, you know, we take title and a land trust on all these. And so right. I, have, I have one of them be the uh, trustee on the land trust. So she can sign them. Got you. So now how do you pay these people? Pay them on a commission and pay them 20% of the front end take. So if we get like last month, we got uh, our biggest down payment to date, $45,000 on a $450,000 house. Nice. Yes. That was now a big that's payment. On your exit strategy. That's, so you got that house under contract or you controlled it. So on that particular deal, you sold it with a $45,000, what, down payment or lease option? Yeah, lease option. It was a non-refundable option fee. Mm -hmm. Nice. So how were you controlling that particular deal? So we, I mean, we did a deal to purchase it from the seller. The seller owned it free and clear. And we just negotiated a monthly payment from him and a price. And, you know, so we bought it from him first and then, you know, sold it on a lease option out to our tenant buyer. Okay. So you actually bought that property and that, that title came into your land trust, right? That's right. And did you buy it with no, nothing down? Actually, on that particular deal, we gave the seller five down. So you only so, gave 5000 down, but then you sold it for 45000 down. That's right. And you bought yeah. it with, so you bought it with seller financing, right? That's right. Yeah. And, and now did you sell it with seller financing or sell it on a lease option? Sold it on a lease option, which in my opinion is basically the same as seller financing, just different paperwork but the money works the same as you know. Sure. Well, I prefer to sell on lease option because my entity still owns it and I've really got control of it, even though they're getting the option to purchase it. And uh, so anyway, this part of the conversation started with how you pay your people. So so you pay your acquisitionist 20% of of when it is sold, 20% of the uh, non-refundable option fee. That's right. Less any down payment we got to give out to the seller. So if we took in 45 down from our buyer and paid out five to the seller, the spread then is 40. We pay 20% on that. Nice. So your acquisitionist incentive is not just to control or buy a property, but it's to get it cash flowing, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. They don't get paid until we get the buyer in there and we, we get paid. Well, that's smart. Because if you're paying out anything just to get that property, then you've got a negative cash flow going on versus waiting until you've actually got a buyer for it. Yeah, that's right. And on that particular deal, now we usually buy with nothing down. 
But on that particular da- uh, deal, since we were agreed to give the seller five down, we just waited to close until we had our buyer lined up and then just basically did a double closing. I got you. So it sounds like you've trained your people to negotiate and really know how to have the conversations with the sellers. How about giving my audience a short seminar on um, what does that conversation sound like? In other words, why would a seller of a property be willing to sell to you with uh, owner financing? Yeah, you know, this particular, we'll just use this deal as an example. This seller, you know, we talk a lot about motivated sellers and people got to be desperate to want to deal with us. I've found that to be true sometimes, but not all the time. And in this particular case is a good example. I don't need them to be desperate. I just need them to be flexible. And in this particular scenario, this seller, he didn't need the money. He didn't need his cash out now. He was just sick of dealing with the property. He had already moved up to the mountains about three hours away. was tired of having to drive back down to Charlotte to check on it and everything. So, I mean, we negotiated the five grand down and $1,200 a month, 0% interest in a three-year balloon. So, you know, he's willing to be flexible and wait to get paid out. And it really is just a matter of asking them, well, you know, what's the best you can do on the price? What's the best you can do on the monthly payment? What's the best you can, how long can you give me to pay you off in full? And if they have, you know, good responses, good answers to that, then, you know, we say, all right, let's go out and see the house. We'll meet you out there and we'll get the paperwork started while we're there. Nice. So what's your favorite way or how have you trained your acquisitionist when they're talking to a seller? What's that question actually sound like to find out if they might be open to the idea of taking their equity and payments or seller finance? In other words, what's the What's the language that you've taught your people to use and to ask? Yeah, you know, I have the VA do it right on the opening call, that first call with them. And he just talks about, explains like a short blurb on how we buy houses. We usually buy with either owner financing or lease purchase. We make a monthly payment to you until we get you paid off in full. And a few reasons we do that and a few benefits to that is that usually we can pay full price and we pay, you know, your asking price. And we take care of everything, including all the closing costs, so you're free and you can just move on. Okay, well, that's, so that's, that's a great strategy right there. So what you have trained your people to do is instead of asking them up front, and of course, I'm sure, I'm sure you've trained them to build some rapport first and, you know, tell me about your situation, tell me about the property, what kind of condition it's in before you actually get to that part of the conversation, right? That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then before asking them, would you be willing to sell with owner financing? Of course, what I've discovered, if you ask somebody, are you willing to sell with owner financing? They don't really know what that means. Yeah. So Uh, in a confused mind just says no. Exactly. Exactly. So, so when your people tell your prospect, your prospective seller, this is how we normally buy houses. We normally buy with uh, with owner financing or seller financing, how does your acquisitionist or your VA actually explain that to where the seller understands what's being said? Yeah, so depending on if they've got a loan on the, the property or not, you know, we can keep using this that particular deal as a case study. He didn't have a loan. And so the way we put it is we basically just ask him, you know, what's the monthly payment, lowest monthly payment you could take? And then if they say 1200 or 1500 or whatever, okay, great. So we're going to pay you that until paid. So that negotiates basically everything for you at 0% without having to bring up interest or anything like so that. You, so you don't, you don't even bring up interest rate in the conversation, right? No, uh-uh, definitely not. Right. So we're going to make that monthly payment until paid. So in this recent deal you were just talking about, there's a three-year balloon. Tell the audience what that means and how this three-year balloon came up in the structure. Yeah, you know, the three, that that deal, normally I would not do a three-year balloon. That'd be like my minimum, but this was such a, a good deal. I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and do it. And that only came up when the seller brought it up because he wanted to get paid off 
within the three year time frame. So to explain a balloon payment just means in whatever time frame, that three years, the whole rest of the amount of the purchase is going to be due at that three year time limit. So so you're giving your new buyer how long to get ready for a mortgage? Yeah, so we give them two years. Right. Right. So right. you know, whatever we get from the seller, we got to give less to our buyer. Right. Now let's talk about your buyers for a moment. So we've talked about how you're finding the sellers. And I like what you say. It doesn't necessarily need to be a desperate seller with your strategy. It needs to, it needs to be a flexible seller to where you can actually pay a lot closer to retail than if you're actually using cash or private money to buy it as at a substantial discount. Like this particular one, you bought it for how much and you sold it for how much? This one we bought for 410 and we sold it for 450. There you go. So yeah. just a, a just a 10% or 45 or $40,000 spread on the sale. So so you're finding your buyers from expired listings and also Facebook ads. So let's talk about the buyers. So what are your favorite cuz right now, you know, your people are not getting paid until they have a buyer for the property that they've located. So you got to have a continual fresh list of buyers, potential buyers of your property to be coming in your funnel. How are you finding them? Yeah, so we use each property that we have for sale, we use that as bait to attract the fish that we want to attract for those types of deals. You know, if you put a $100,000 house out there on a lease option, you're going to get a different type of fish and different type of buyer than you would on a $450,000 house. So we always want to use the the actual property as bait to attract all the people. And of course, everybody who contacts us goes into the database and they'll get an email on future properties as well. So but uh, on this particular deal, these uh, buyers actually came in, we had a uh, for rent ad on Zillow. So instead of putting it for sale on Zillow, we put it for rent. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And these were people who really were looking to rent, but only because they thought they would not be able to buy. And right. so, we, had, you know, we then we just they respond to the ad and we just let them know this is going to be a rent to own or lease purchase. What if we could help you buy this thing? And they're like, oh, wow. Well, yeah, we got, you know, we've been saving money on a down payment and, you know, they can't get qualified right now because they're self-employed. They got their own trucking business. Right. Make, make a ton of money but their credit is shot for whatever reason, or, you know, they don't have two years of tax returns to show. And um, so, you know, they come to us, pay the option fee, and we help them get qualified over the next couple of years. Well, that's interesting that you were promoting this home for rent on Zillow. They respond, your people tell them, well, we're actually selling this on a rent to own basis. How do you negotiate the initial down payment or non-refundable option fee? Yeah, you know, with each buyer lead that comes in, it's just like with sellers. We got we to gotta pre-screen them first. And with a buyer, we're just asking them different questions than with the seller. So with the buyer, we ask them, I mean, the two biggest questions are, you know, how much do you have to put down on your beautiful new home? And then the second question is, you know, what's the most you can afford on a monthly payment? And you know, if those numbers look good, then we'll send them out to the house or have the acquisitionist meet them out of the house just to show them the inside. And then if they like it, then we get them to fill out a two page application there that goes to, to underwriting. You know, we use a service that, <laughs> you know, screens them for background and everything else and checks all the debt ratios and that sort of thing for us. Right. Do you use Paul Ritter service or somebody yes. else? Yeah. Yeah. Screen the tenant, Paul Ritter service. Yep, yeah. Yeah. That's who we use. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if everything looks good, we just go ahead and set a, a, a deal meeting with the buyers and I have the acquisition is do this now. And the key is you want the buyer going into that deal meeting, not knowing for sure if they qualified and got the house yet. Right. So, so then when you go meet with them, you're asking them, are you sure this, what you told me on your down payment maximum, are you sure that's the max? And then they usually come up a little bit more. And same with the monthly payment. Are you sure this is the most you can do on the monthly? And then they come up a little bit more. So you're negotiating with them a little bit. Right. 
And then, you know, you just pencil in the numbers on a little one page sheet that we call a letter of intent and send it over to the attorney and say, all right, here's the move in, you know, here's the signing date and the attorney takes care of the rest. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. My lands, but we're almost out of time. So uh, one, one question that I'm sure some of our uh, audience is wanting to know, and that is, uh, well, it's truly a two part question. So you got this, the lease option buyer has moved in mm -hmm. and you're giving them two years to get ready. Are you forcing them into credit repair or are you leaving them to do it on their own? We're leaving them to do it on their own. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of that question is, so you got a three-year balloon. So you know where I'm going with this question. Mm -hmm. So you got a three-year balloon with your seller and they want you to cash them out within those, within those three years. What happens if your buyer is not ready within two years? Well, I mean, it'll be our choice at that point, whether we want to extend more time to the buyer but if it goes beyond that three years we got with the seller, then it's really going to be up to them. And we would just go to the seller and say, hey, look, you know, we got these people in here. They could probably get qualified in the next year. But, you know, you got your three year balloon here. You want to extend and we'll keep going or you want to just call it quits now. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. It's called the deal after the deal. That's right. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Blair, I, even though we're out of time, I just got to ask you one more question. And I tell you what's really cool. I want everybody to know this is, is you have now put together your own step-by-step uh, -step training as to how you do the business. And we're going to give everybody out a, uh, a website here in just a moment where they can go check out more in detail as to how you do the business. But before we do that, uh, one last question for you, and that is, What's the best advice that you can give to a brand new real estate investor that's never done a deal before? You know, the quickest path to a deal is talking to as many sellers as quickly and efficiently as possible. So, you know, everything else we do in the business is designed to support having more conversations, meaningful conversations with sellers. So you could do this business with pen and paper and your cell phone, or you could have all the fancy stuff going along with it, uh, like some of us do, to help speed that up. But I mean, if you're just starting out and if you don't have any kind of budget or, at all, just pick up the phone and start calling people with a house for sale. It really is that simple. And you're finding, and your people are finding uh, sellers, flexible sellers, mm -hmm. Yes, expired listings, but I would suppose they're making outbound calls to people on Zillow and other for sale by owner sites, right? Yes, for sale by owner as well as for rent by owner. Awesome, awesome. Well, Blair, let's let people know that they can get up with you and find out more about how you do the business if they'd like to. So we're going to put right up here for those that are watching the video. Uh, we've got a special URL to connect people with you, and that's www dot j connor j a y c o n n e r dot com forward slash blair b l a i r and that will take people right to you blair blair thank you so much for taking the time to uh join me here for a few minutes on um real estate investing with jay connor it's been a pleasure to actually see you and hang out for a little bit yeah no i appreciate you having me on jay always a pleasure talking to you that's awesome. Well, look, I'm sure we'll be seeing each other at some real estate investing conference before too long. So uh, be in touch and, um, and I'll be talking to you soon. OK. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right. Awesome. OK, folks, uh, two websites to remind you of the uh, five steps on getting private money for your deals. JayConnor.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. And uh, to connect with Blair. Jay Connor, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash Blair, B L A I R. If you are listening to us on iTunes or Google Play, be sure and uh, uh, subscribe to us so you don't miss out on future content and shows and rate and review us. We appreciate that. If you're watching on one of our YouTube channels, uh, be sure and comment right below in the comment bar. Give us your comments. We love your feedback. Shoot us your questions. We'll get your uh, real estate investing questions uh, answered. And uh, be sure and uh, give us a review as well here on uh, YouTube and the channels. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Bye for now. We'll see you on the next show. Bye-bye.